Hi guys, sorry, I, I I can't sign into the Achieve account, so I'm just having to do this from my own account, um, which should still work in terms of recording. Um, so sorry, um, sorry for the delay. I was actually sitting in a in another meeting room, thinking like, where is everybody? <laughs> Until I realised what was happening. So let's start lying down on your backs and just. Come into some gentle core activation. So the recording's already on. So lay down on your back, feet hip width apart and parallel, and the feet just bent underneath the knees. And then just have a go tucking the pelvis under and then untucking, just feeling what it feels like to connect the lower back to the ground and then releasing. So having that gap under the lower back and then keep that gap under the lower back with the tailbone connected and engage the core. So lift through the pelvic floor, like you're trying to stop from peeing and then wrap around the transverse abdominal, that belt, and then pin that in belly button to spine and then ribs to hips. Hold that for another five, four, three, two, one, and then release. And it should feel quite different. And then we're going to engage again. Make sure the tailbone stays connected to the floor and you maintain that lower gap, core engage. And then we're just going to start lifting one leg at a time so that the shin comes to parallel to the ground. Make sure the shoulders stay down and back. Tightening, tightening. And just keep that tailbone connected to the ground. Keep the core engaged. It should feel pretty easy. If you'd like to progress the movement on, you can start to add the extension. So lift up the leg, extend the leg, and depending how hard you want it, lower is harder, um, higher is easier. So lift and extend. Come back to lift and then back. So when you come to the tabletop position after you extend the leg, make sure you don't bring the knee further forward. You just stay in that range where the core has to be engaged to keep you steady. If the other leg, the leg that's connected to the ground starts wobbling out to the side, press that foot into the ground more, really engage that core. That's gonna keep the hips nice and stable. And then we're gonna do another few more. So inhale to come up, exhale to extend, inhale, come back to tabletop, exhale, release. Or you can just keep flowing Inhaling and exhaling through the nose, preferably, and externally rotate from the hip when you point the leg. Let's just do a couple more. And then we're going to keep the back as it is in that neutral spine position so you can relax the legs again. Engage the core. Set up, um, keeping the left leg down. We're going to extend the right leg up to the ceiling and just start drawing circles about the size of a dinner plate. Doesn't really matter which direction. One direction is going to be harder than the other, but to be honest, they feel exactly the same to me. Keep the leg externally rotated from the hip. Exhale for a few breaths, inhale for a few circles, sorry, <laughs> for a few breaths. Um, and try and maintain that gap underneath the lower back. You can make the circles as big as you like, as long as you don't compromise that bent leg. So that should stay nice and stable. Really point through the toe, keep externally rotating, especially if you get that clicking in the hip. If you'd like to change directions, you can change directions, moving as quickly or as slowly as you like. If you're going for a really big circle, ensure that the hips don't rock side to side, keeping everything still except for that leg. Let's just do a few more on this side. Change directions again if you want to, to make it a little bit harder. Make sure that left leg stays nice and stable. The timer today. So I think I'll put one on. And let's do another three, two, one, and relax that leg back down and come straight to the other side. So reset the core, lift up into left leg extending, externally rotate from the hip and start drawing circles. Ground down into the right foot, really lock the core down so that you ensure that the right leg isn't wobbling. Change directions when you get a chance, just to see how it feels. Maybe you do find one side a little bit easier than the other. And really point through the toes. Keep that leg externally rotated. Keep the right foot grounding down and keep the core engaged. So rib to hip connection as well and shoulders down and back. Chin is tucked in and neck is long. If you can at the same time as you're moving through the circles, 
Also press the back of the head into the mat. And you'll notice that that kind of stabilizes the upper body as well from rolling side to side. Change directions again, keeping that leg externally rotated. Keep breathing through the nose. We've only got another 10 or so left of these. Nine, eight, you can make the circle really big if you want, just move really slowly so that you stay stable in the hips and you're not rolling out to the side as you take that knee lower, or that leg, sorry, lower. Three, two, and one, and come down to rest with that leg. Then we're gonna re-engage, this time imprint the spine. So make sure that lower back is connecting to the ground and lift up both legs into the tabletop position, hip width apart, making sure that the tailbone is still on the ground and shins are parallel to the ground. And then we're gonna gently tap the toes down, returning the leg to the start position, making sure it doesn't come further forward. The further away that you tap, the harder it will be. The closer you tap, the easier it will be. However, make sure that you're not just bending at the knees and kind of like kicking the lower part of the leg. The whole leg moves as one unit. And you can really feel the difference when you do like stop and just kick the, like the bottom legs or if you start tapping a little bit closer and then tap a little further away and then come back to the center again. Just another few seconds of this, and then we'll progress it on. If you'd like it to be harder, you can now bring in double toe taps. So you can bring the legs back up to the start position, squeeze them together, or you can kick them here for the part. It's a little bit um, easier squeeze together and lower both at the same time. To support your um, tailbone, you can wedge the thumbs underneath the glutes with the palms facing down. And that just gives you a little bit of leverage to make sure that you're not arching into the lower back as you lower the legs. We want to keep that lower back imprinted against the spine. If that's too much, you can go back to just regular toe taps. You've only got a few left here, maybe another 10. If you're going with double, slow and controlled through the whole movement, make sure that the belly doesn't pop up so the rectus stays nice and pinned down. Another three, two, Last one and come back to relax. This time we're gonna set up again. So imprint the spine, bend up both legs into your tabletop position as we did before. And you can squeeze the legs together. This time we're going to pendulum to arm that wide and just gently rock side to side. Make sure that the knees stay directly above the hips and that the legs stay pointed and together. So you're rolling from one hip to the other. Only go as far as you can go where you know you can bring yourself back up again with control. If this is already easy, then straighten the top leg, bring it back to the center, bend it again. Swivel to the side, straighten the top leg, in, exhale back to the center. Inhale, roll over to the side, straighten the top leg, exhale, come back to the center. So keep flowing with the breath. If it's super easy with the legs, bent and you want to try both legs straight then that is your um that's your step up progression so both legs really super straight squeezing the legs together it's also really helpful for the inner thigh muscles and the adductors with movements like this where the legs are together if you want to grab like a pillow and hold it between the feet um like a little cushion or something just to, so that you can ensure that you're squeezing the legs together really nicely and it almost makes it seem a little bit lighter so we've only got a few more left of these try and keep it slow and controlled moving with the breath breathing in through the nose and out through the nose let's do another six Five, four, three, two, and last one, inhale down, exhale to come back up, remove the pillow if you had one, 
chuck it to the side and bring the legs back down, sit, resetting up again. Find your course. Rolling my yoga mat all over the place. <laughs> set, set up again on your back. And again, find the imprinted spine. Engage through the core. This time we're going to take the elbows out wide and the fingertips are going to rest just behind the ears. Relax the head into the hands and squeeze from the ribs, squeezing down to the hips to connect to that core engagement as you lift the shoulder, head and shoulders up. So just a gentle ab curl. Start with those, really initiating the movement from the rib to hip connection. Inhale to come back down, exhale to come back up. If you want to make this harder, then after your next reset on the ground, really imprint the spine, lengthen through the tailbone, engage the core and lift up the legs into tabletop. Keep going with the ab curl. So legs are in tabletop position. They can be hip width apart or squeezing together. Really slide the ribs down to the hips. So it's a very small movement of the upper abs. If you're ready to add in a crisscross, then it's opposite rib to hip as you extend the leg that you're turning away from. The higher that you extend, the easier it will be. The lower you extend, the harder it will be. Let's go for another 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Exhale as you slide ribs to hips, four, if you're just in a straight abdominal curl and you're just going up and down, no crisscross. Two, and last one, squeeze the ribs to hips, slowly lower back down, head, and then the feet relax. Take a breath in and a long breath out. We're coming into some nutcrackers. So it's, um, bring the legs up to tabletop again. So go to the core, legs and tabletop. Arms can be straight up ahead and you can just place one hand on top of the other. Either keeping the feet together and then the knees will come apart as you exhale, reach the hands through the legs. That's option one. It's like an abdominal curl, but the legs are opening up so that you can reach forward. But to progress the movement, you can extend the legs out as you reach forward. But try not to extend them back towards you. I know that with the straddle and inverting with pole, we're used to taking the legs up and over but we wanna keep these legs on the same plane as the hips so that the feet don't come any closer to us. And that means that you have to reach further away as you exhale and come up, you have to really reach through the legs to get the hands past the crutch. Inhale to come back down, exhale to come back up. Inhale, shoulders down and back, exhale, ribs to hips. Inhale, extend through the fingers. Exhale, reach the fingers forward. Inhale, make sure that the legs are, the knees are directly above the hips. Exhale, take the legs wide or the knees wide and keep them away from you. Inhale, core. Exhale, ribs to hips. Let's do another 10. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six, I'm going to turn off my timer because it's not serving me. Five, four, three, two, and last one. Reach forward, further forward than you've reached before, and then release back down. Have a little rest. Stretch out, taking the arms up above you while we get ready for some hundreds. Is it too early to do hundreds? Nah, it's only going to get harder anyway. <laughs> so when you're ready, the three options for hundreds is the legs will either be in tabletop position or you can have the feet down if you really want to and then you're just pulsing here. Um, the second position is to have the legs straight up or to have them lowered. If they're lowered, externally rotate from the hips and create little duck feet um, by flexing the feet and then you're lowering and pulsing down here. So pick your poison. Decide now where your legs are going to go. Inhale, set up, core engages, ribs to hip connection. Lower back is imprinting against the mat. Bring up one leg at a time into your chosen position and then reach forward with the hands. 
Go legs up today. Reach forward with the hands until you can't reach further forward anymore. Shoulders and head are up, shoulders down and back, and then chin tucked in. And we're pulsing for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. So tiny little pulsations from the shoulders. The palms can be down. We can twist them up. It really doesn't matter. But really extend through the through the toes or through the heels if you've got the legs lowered. Really reach further far past the, the past your legs, like you're trying to sit up. And you'll notice every time you re-engage that rib to hip connection, you will have lost a little bit because the body's trying to lie down. So reach a little bit further forward. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. We've only got a couple more rounds left. Keep pulsing. Keep breathing, try and keep the belly from popping up. You want to keep it nice and flat. So last breath, inhale, last exhale, and then slowly release back down, release the legs, stretch out the arms, stretch out the legs, come into a full body stretch. That's, I mean, I'd love to say that's the core done, but we literally use the core for everything else. So that's the core, the specific core work done. Um, so we're going to come up to seated next. Whew, I can feel that. <laughs> so sitting in an L-sit position and we're just going to come into some single leg lifts. So bring the, um, pull the sit bones out from underneath you. You can roll up your mat or put a cushion underneath you to help you tip the hips forward if you need to, but you just want to be in this kind of like L shape. So your back is nice and straight, legs are straight. Place the hands on the mat beside you, lengthen through the crown of the head and you should feel yourself tipping slightly forward on the, on the sit bones, bend the knees as much as you need to to be in this nice straight back position. Then we're gonna point the feet, squeeze the legs together, bring the hands forward so that they're on either side of, about the knees is where I find it most useful. And we're gonna lift one leg at a time. So you may need to kind of, you won't be able to keep straight in the back here. You have to kind of collapse back a little bit so that you can get the rib to hip connection and really squeeze the hip flexor to lift up and try and lift up from the center of the leg. So it's more about the iliacus and deep hip flexors rather than the quad. So trying to externally rotate slightly to lift up. If you're feeling like this is really easy and you want to progress it, then you will be doing a double leg lift. <sighs> Squeezing the legs together, lifting up both at one time. Nice, Jeff. So really push the hands into the mat, really engage through the core to lift up the legs. <sighs> you can come back to the single leg lifts for another few breaths, but let's do another 10 here. If you're doing singles and you're doing 20, three, four, if you're doing doubles, up, pause, down, pause, up, pause, down, pause. That just keeps it in time so that you have to bring it up, hold it for a second, and then you should be in time to do the 10. The 10 should take as long as what the 20 would take single leg. Go for another five, four, three, two, last one, and release. Bend up the knees. You can take them um, wide and then both to one side and then both to the other side, just releasing out into the hips. Come back into your L sit and just have a go squeezing the glutes. So really activating through the, um, the glute muscles, maybe squeeze one at a time, two or three times. Then we're gonna bend up the legs. Fingertips are facing back towards me. Push the hips up by squeezing the glutes, push the hips up until they're in a, a straight line from the knees to the shoulders. And then we're gonna sweep back, keep the hips lifted and then push forward into tabletop. So that's our pulsation from tabletop into a floating L-sit and then back up again. So it's not quite a floating L-sit because your heels are on the ground, but the idea is that you're really getting that punch in the gut engagement up in that upper core to keep the hips lifted throughout the movement. If you want to add on and you think that you are ready to try an actual L-sit, then you can come up into a tabletop 
and then try and float the legs when you come back. Push up to tabletop, push down into the hands, see if you can bring the legs together. Even if you just kind of like clap the, the heels together, that's the start of like being able to hold in an L sit. Yes, Isabella. Go, Jess. Show me. Go squeeze up and then all the way back, hips come in between the hands. Up and then all the way back, hips are floating in between the hands. So keep the glute off the ground, the glutes off the ground throughout the whole movement. Even if you're coming back to that L sit where you're floating and clapping the feet together, the glutes do not touch the ground. Let's do another three, two, so the legs if you're trying that variation. Last one. And release back down. Give the hands a little shake. Give the wrists a shake because that's quite a big one. We're going back into a tabletop to do a few more um, leg lifts. So you can also do this on, um, on blocks can be a little bit helpful for the wrists. Otherwise I like on the, on the fists is another option or the back of the sofa that we normally do this one. So we're coming up into tabletop. This, sorry, this proper, there's a few tabletops in, in Pilates. But this one, extend the leg straight, come back down, sit again if you need to, otherwise stay up and you're just extending through the leg, keep the hips even. So you'll notice one hip wants to dip as you extend. Squeeze the glutes to keep the hips up in line with the knees and the shoulders. So lift up a little bit higher. Let's do another 10. Inhale to extend, exhale lower. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Squeeze the glutes, keep the hips up, two, and last one, and release. Come forward, just allow yourself to come into a gentle forward bend. I want to see what's next. So we're coming over into, actually let's lie down onto our sides um, and move into a few little um, glute exercises. So laying down on your side, left, let's start with the left arm underneath us. So we'll start with the right leg. The left arm is underneath you stretched out. You can rest the head onto the arm. Make sure that the shoulders are down and back. And you'll notice that you have, you should have a little gap underneath the waist to be in your neutral spine position. Ribs connect to hips, engage the core. Knees are bent so that the feet are in line with the booty. Stick out the tailbone just slightly, like you're trying to... Um, kind of lengthen through the sit bones, but maintain that core and rib to hip connection. Right hand can just rest on the floor. We're gonna squeeze the glute to open up the legs and then exhale, bring it back down again. Inhale to squeeze, exhale to come back down. If you're struggling to keep that waist, um, to keep the gap underneath the waist, you can put the hand on the top hip and push it away from you. That really helps to maintain the stability. Ensure that you're squeezing the glute before you move the leg. Then squeeze the glute. We're going to add on if you want to. So you're going to inhale, squeeze to open. Exhale to extend the leg. Inhale to bring the feet back together. Exhale, start position. So inhale, open. Exhale, extend. Really squeeze the glute max to bring that leg in line with the body. Inhale, feet together. Exhale, knees together. So keep moving in this way. And you'll notice it's, so this is two parts of the glute. So the glute med opens the leg up. Then the glute max brings the leg in line with the body without rocking forward or back. So if you notice that your hips want to sway, really ground down with that top hip, um, with the top hand, pushing the top hip away. Make sure that you maintain that little gap underneath you. Stick the tailbone out and really squeeze the core. That's going to be what keeps you nice and straight so that the right hip stays stacked on top of the left. Let's do another five here. Four. Inhale, open. 
exhale, extend. Inhale together, exhale, start position. Last two, squeeze the leg. Really point through the toe so that it's nice and light rather than heavy and floppy. And release back to the start. Flip over, actually we'll stay in this one. So same start position, waist underneath you, knees bent, ensuring that you've got your core engaged. Then we're gonna extend the legs straight out to where it was and just do leg lift and lowers. So down and back up. And you really should feel that firing in that glute med on the side of the booty. This is what gives us the high booty, but also really helpful for any movement. So we've got straddles. So pretty much inverts, shoulder mounts, anything where we have to ask the leg to come out this way is that that's this muscle. So let's do another 10, nine, Try and keep the leg back in line with the body so that we're also using the glute max because it's a big muscle. Six, five, point through the toes all the way. You want the leg to be nice and straight. So then that way there's no dead weight on it. Last three, two, one, and release back down. Bend up both knees. Make sure that they're at 90 degrees. So this time the feet is away from, uh, the feet are away from the body. Again, that gap underneath the waist. Ground down into that left hip, engage the core ribs to hips, and then we're opening just kind of um, straight up and down with that whole leg. It's almost like a fire hydrant. Now we do the fire hydrants on all fours, but this one is a laying down fire hydrant. So keep the foot and the knee opening up at the same time. It's kind of, I think it's called like a clam three. Um, so you'll really feel this by now in that glute, opening up the leg. Let's do another five. Oh, these ones are strong <laughs> after all that other stuff. Four, three, two. Keep the leg moving all at the same time. And last one. This time straighten the bottom leg, bend up that top leg. It's now resting. Don't bend it up too close to the body. I kind of have it bent up and in front of the knee, unless you've got the flexibility to bring it all the way up, in which case this isn't really change the movement. Keep that um, gap under the waist, core engaged, and we're lifting the underneath leg, so that lower leg, the underneath leg, the leg that's underneath will be straight. And you're lifting that using the inner thigh muscles. Really keep that gap underneath the waist. This is where it's gonna to wanna to come up. And it's the tiniest little movement. And try not to jerk the leg up. We wanna keep it smooth and controlled. Really extend through the crown of the head to keep the shoulders down and back, chin tucked in, core engaged. Exhale as you lift the leg, inhale to lower back down. Exhale, lift, inhale, lower. So this should be really active in that inner thigh now. Exhale to lift, inhale to lower. Let's do another 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, Last one and release back down, release to the center. Have a couple of um, little bridges if you want to, just re-engaging through the glute to the middle and then over to the other side. So right leg, right arm is gonna extend out underneath you. Head resting on the right arm, bend up the legs so that the feet are in line with the body and do the body scan. So crown of the head lengthens, chin tucked in, shoulders down and back, ribs to hips, gap underneath the waist, core engaged, hips stacked, feet in line with the body, stick the sit bones slightly out and then inhale to engage that side glute on the left side and then exhale to bring it back down. So starting with just our clams, just to get that glute media firing and really isolate it and really pull that femur back into the body. So for me personally, this will go straight into my quad if I don't actively keep that leg engaged into the hip. That's how I can really isolate it into that glute med. If you're ready for the kick out, it's inhale to open, exhale to extend, back in line with the body, really squeeze the glute max, inhale to bring the feet back together and then exhale to the start position. So inhale open, exhale extend, inhale back together, exhale close. Keep flowing with the breath. 
And the higher that you take the leg, the harder it will be. The lower that you keep it, the, um, I mean, I don't want to say easy because I feel like you still feel this no matter how you do it. So try to keep the hips from rocking backwards and forwards. Really keep that top hip stacked on top of the right hip. And as you come back, don't come back so far that it ends up arching into the lower back. You really want to keep the back and the spine nice and straight and strong by engaging through the core before you move. Inhale, open, exhale, extend. Inhale, feet together, exhale, knees together. Let's do another five of these. Four. And three. Last two. Make them the best reps you've done so far. And last one, squeeze the glute. Squeeze glute max. Bring the feet together and knees together. Relax for a second, give it a little rub down, and then we're going to straighten that top leg and we're coming into our leg lift. So reset, waist gap under the waist and squeezing through the core, lengthening through the toes. So we're lifting the top leg up and down. You want to make sure that it's in line with the body so you're still using that glute and then it's not causing that waist to dip down as you move. So keep the motion smaller so that you can maintain the neutral spine and really isolate it into the glute and the side of the leg. Let's do another 10, nine, eight, seven, extend through the toes. Reset if you need to, stop in between reps, reset the back if you need to. We should be another four, three, two, last one and bring the feet together. Bend up the knees so that they're at 90 degrees. So we're coming to this fire hydrant kind of thing. Um, flex the feet as well. So hips are in line with the body. Gap underneath the waist, core engaged, and then start lifting the whole top leg. So it just comes straight up and down, kind of like a book opens. And we won't do too many here because they're pretty intense. <laughs> but let's do another five. Five. Exhale to lift, inhale to lower, four. Three, really flex into the foot or point the feet just to keep them nice and light. Two, last one, and release. Bend up that top leg, straighten the bottom leg. So if you don't want to put the foot on the ground, um, as an example, I can't put the top foot on the ground because I have a sprained foot and it doesn't work laterally currently. Um, so a uh, pillow underneath the knees, a nice option just to keep a little gap there. And then the other leg is extended out underneath you. Squeeze to lift and then lower with control. Exhale to squeeze, inhale to lower. Make sure the core stays engaged. It's going to protect the hips from rocking back and forward. Shoulders down and back, chin tucked in, neck long. Make sure that you can feel the movement starting from the inner thigh before you lift the leg up. So think in a thigh, then lift. This one's a little bit, um, it's a nice break after all the glute stuff to focus on the inner thigh, but it's kind of how it works too. It'll relax the glute because you're using the opposing muscle. So it, it's, a, it's on purpose that we do it in this order. Okay, after these, we're gonna roll onto our back for our last little bit of glute stuff. Actually, now we're going to roll into our front and do some back extension stuff. Change your mind. Okay, let's do another 10. Nine, slow with control, point through the toes. Seven, six, think inner thigh first, then lift. Four, three, two, and last one and release. Roll over onto your bellies. And we're gonna set up for some back extension work. So you can take the hands and just pop, pop one on top of the other with the head resting on the hands while you set up your legs. So bring the legs together so that they're relaxed and really press the tops of the feet together into the mat and so that you can feel what it feels like to engage the legs. And you'll notice the kneecaps lift up off the floor, then release them back down again. 
We're going to take the hands out to cactus arms so that they're bent at 90 degree angles. And then we're going to inhale to lift up. Make sure the core is engaged and the belly is lifting up away from the floor. And then inhale to lift up and exhale to come back down. So inhale to lift, exhale, release. As you flow with the breath, legs are relaxed and the arms are relaxed. So the arms aren't pushing down at all. It's just back strength that you're using to lift the body up. And really it's just the upper back. So you shouldn't be feeling this at all in the lower back, just feeling the upper back lifting you up. If you wanna make it a little bit harder, bring the elbows out wide, fingertips to just behind the ears and keep the elbows out of your peripheral vision. Let's do another 10. Keep the chin tucked in and the neck long. So don't jerk up or look up. You wanna kind of keep looking at one spot just underneath you on the mat. Five, four, keep the neck long. Three, press the tongue to the roof of the mouth if you need to. And last one, we're gonna hold up here. So keep holding, keep lengthening through the crown of the head. Arms can come down beside you. If you want to also lift the legs up, you can be engaged, lengthened away from you. They will separate. Open up the palms to face forward, lengthen through the crown of the head, lift through the legs, lift through the back for five, four, three, two, one, and then exhale, release. Have a little rest here. And then we're gonna take the arms forward until they're in a um, kind of like a Superman position with the palms facing each other. Squeeze the legs together and we're gonna inhale and lift up. Keep the legs down. Exhale to lower. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. If you want to bring the legs into it, you can, but try not to make the movement jerky. You want it to be really nice and controlled and you don't want to feel it in your lower back. So every time you come back down to the ground, it's an opportunity to reset, re-engage the core, keep the belly away from the ground. That's how you know the core is really supporting the lower back. And then lift. And you should feel the more that you engage that core, the stronger that you can feel, you can control it on the way down. Let's do another three and then we're going to hold on the third one. So inhale, lift up, three, exhale, lower, two. Last one, let's hold, extend through the fingertips, extend through the toes. If you can feel your lower back, come back down, re-engage the core and then reset, come back up. Extend, lift through the back of the head, chin tucked in, neck long. One more breath in and then exhale, release. Take a little rest there. This time we're gonna come back into, let's push back onto um, all fours so that we can come up onto our knees and do some uh, hinges. They're called hinges in Pilates, um, but they're kind of, I know in yoga, it's called a drunken yogi, which I like that name better. <laughs> and so feet, knees are hip width apart, legs are parallel. You can tuck the feet underneath you to help give you a little bit of traction. Tuck under the tailbone so that you're a straight line from the head down to the knees and you're just slowly lowering and then coming back up. So depending how your feet feel, mine, I can't have mine tucked under right now because of the sprain, but you can have them flat. If you would like to add some arms in, only come back so far as you know, you can lift yourself back up again without compromising that straight line from the knees to the head. So really squeeze the core as you come back. Inhale to come back up. Oh, sorry, inhale down, <laughs> exhale to come back up. We want to exhale in the more difficult part of the pose. Inhale, exhale. If you want to add the arms, inhale to open. Exhale, come back together. Inhale, exhale. So you should really feel this in your core and in your quads. Let's do another six of these. Inhale to come back, exhale to come back up. Five, four, Last three, two, last one, and release. 
come down into all fours now and we'll do another few little um actually we'll go straight to some arm work have the glutes had enough <laughs> yeah i feel like they definitely have <laughs> so let's start with just some tricep um circles so coming into all fours find your neutral spine so lengthen through the crown of the head, chin tucked in. Do a couple of serratus activation. So sliding the shoulder blades to touch at the back of the spine and then sliding them away from each other. Maybe just five or six of those. Really keep the shoulders down away from the ears. Reset, find your neutral spine. So the tailbone is lengthening, crown of the head lengthening and you should feel rib tip connection core engaged. This should feel like Maybe not hard, but like it should feel like an effort to have everything so engaged and holding you up here. If you want to make it harder, tuck the toes under, hover the knees. If you want to make it even harder, step out into a full plank. And we're just going for body scans. So lengthening through the crown of the head, chin tucked in, shoulders down and back, making sure that the shoulder blades are flush with the back. Then ribs to hips. Core engages, so put on the belt. Pelvic floor lifts, squeeze the glutes, lengthen through the heels. Start again at the crown of the head. We've got about 30 seconds left. Lengthen through the tailbone, through the crown of the head, push down into the hands to lift the upper back and line of the shoulder blades. Keep the core lifting, almost like your toes want to come in towards you. Scan down, ribs to hips, core engaged. Lengthen through the tailbone, lengthen through the head. Start your body scan again and just keep body scanning through. And you'll notice in this way that you start shaking because it's making it harder and harder every time you do a body scan. So we've got another 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release back down. Go into a child's pose if you need it. Reset the wrist, give them a little shake. Sorry, I said tricep circles when we came into plank. Now we'll do tricep circles. So these ones, it's called circle, but it's really a rectangle. So you set up in your neutral spine position, shoulders are uh, directly over wrists, hips over knees, lengthen, strengthen through the core. And then we're gonna go straight down. So elbows bend back towards you, straight forward, straight up, and then back to your start position. So the rectangle is being drawn in front of the body. So keep moving in this way, straight down, inhale as you come forward, exhale as you push up and down. So inhale down, exhale forward, up, inhale back and down. Exhale forward, up, inhale back and down. Keep moving in this way. If you wanna make it harder, go all the way down, sniff the floor. If you wanna make it easier, make the circles a little bit more shallow. We have a look. Nice, Isabella. Charlotte is just cleaning the floor with your face. <laughs> nice and deep. <laughs> I can't even see Saria because she goes down that low that she's out of the camera. <laughs> I'm like, if you can make it easier, and everyone's like, nah, I want to lick the ground. <laughs> Jeff, those look really solid. Keep the elbows pointing back towards the um, wall behind you. So they're at like a 45 degree angle. That's actually your, um, your perfect push up position is a 45 degree angle. So you're not using the side waist, but you're also not taking the elbows out so wide that you can't use your chest. So let's do another six, five, four, three, last two, and last one, come back to neutral spine, push back into a child's pose, relax the hands for a little minute, and we're going to finish with some push-ups before we have a little stretch, so I just want to see, um, Let's do 20 really solid push-ups. They can be on the knees. You can do 10 on the knees, 10 on the feet. But we just want to keep them nice and strong. 
elbows go back at a 45 degree angle and the chest comes down to the floor. If you can push straight back up. We don't, we want to make sure the core is engaged. So it's a lift and lower of a plank, either from the knees or from the toes and 20. When you come up, try and come up into that full serratus activation so that the arms, sorry, the shoulder blades are flush with the back of the body. Maybe have a break in between every five or every 10. Make sure you're still breathing. Exhale as you push up. Inhale lower. Exhale, push up. Have a rest if you need to and go again. Make sure that you reset. The reason that I offer a rest is it's a rest, but it's a reset. It's an opportunity to come back, make sure your core is still engaged. Make sure the shoulders aren't creeping up towards the ears. Make sure that elbows aren't bending back too wide. Try and bend the elbows towards the wall behind you. I know it seems like less strong, especially if you're doing like you're used to doing the really wide ones, but this is actually where you can incorporate the correct muscles to do this movement. So the last few, Once you're done, you can rest in a child's pose with the knees out wide, toes together, reaching the hands forward. We're gonna push back up to a downward facing dog. So hips up to the sky, bend through the knees a lot to take the weight out of the hands. And then we're gonna come forward into a pigeon. So make sure that the um, right knee is out to the side, excuse me, right knees out to the side and you're laying down over the right foot, the right ankle. And you can either stay up in a tall pigeon pose, or you can start to walk the hands forward to rest on the elbows or onto the, onto the head, onto the ground. Still work, puppy dog. Thank you. Try and lengthen the exhales here. Maybe even taking them twice as long as the inhale. Maybe have a few relaxing sighs. Walk the hands back in towards you. Slide that right leg in. Step back up to a downward dog to go to the other side. The left leg bends out and take the right knee back, slowly lowering that left hip to the ground. And you wanna make sure both hip bones are evenly facing the earth. Inhale to lengthen and then exhale to fold. Keep the chin tucked in and the neck long wherever you are so that you Trying to elongate the spine through every movement. We've just got one or two breaths here. And then we'll lean onto the left hip. Onto, onto the left glute to bring around, actually to roll over onto your tummy again and bring the elbows on directly underneath the shoulders, thumbs on the mat, roll the shoulders back, pull the heart forward and lengthen through the whole spine. So you should feel a nice stretch up around the middle of the back. If you'd like to um, increase this, take the hands out wider so that they're kind of like seal Still flap, um, yeah, still hands, I guess. And then push into the hands, drop the heart forward. 
So the arms will be straight, but you're still allowing gravity to soften through the back of the heart. And then gently walk the hands closer. You can come back down, reset the hands, come into an upward dog. So the thighs are off the ground, into the tops of the feet and the hands roll the shoulders back, pull through the heart. Just getting a nice stretch through the abdominals. And then bending out again. This time take the feet, um, the feet and the knees out wide to come into a froggy position, coming down onto the elbows so that you're stretching out the inner groin. Make sure that the hips are in line with the knees. So walk the hips back. Yeah, that's where it's going to feel really intense. And make sure the feet are flexed. So you've got 90 degree angle at the waist and then between the waist and the thighs. A 90 degree angle between the thighs and the calves, the hamstrings and the calves. And then another 90 degrees between the shins and the feet. And if you gently push back, try and keep the core engaged. So you still want to be a straight line through the spine. You don't want to have any sagging through the back and sticking that tailbone out. So it's almost like a lengthening through the tailbone and through the crown of the head, core engages. Use the exhales to soften here. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, soften. One more breath in. And then release forward, roll onto the belly, bring the legs back together, push back. Have a few little shoulder rolls to release out. We did a lot of back shoulder things. And back the other direction. Maybe some head rolls if you like. But other than that, thanks guys. Hope that was, it. Hope that was good. Good balance of full body stuff. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Thanks for coming you. to find me. <laughs> Sitting in the wrong room. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Have you. a good day. Thanks, Isabel. Bye bye. Say bye bye, bye, -bye to Richmond. <laughs> oh, yes, I will. I'll give me a kiss for you. I'll message you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, um, let me know. I'll bring you over. Oh. <laughs>